Simple hard to come by. Now, let's talk about the movie Ponyo. In this film, the director Hayao Miyazaki openly depicts his personal view of womanhood, which can be pretty controversial to say the least. His portrayal of women includes some scary details, and since I've been talking about some horror stories like urban legends lately, it's a perfect time to talk about Ponyo in a way that's a little erotic and extremely frightening. So, Grandma Maure is like a goddess of the sea. She's Ponyo's mother and the wife of Fujimoto. This one here is the character Fujimoto, and he's human. This little one at the bow of the ship, and Grandma Mare is huge compared to him. She's serene, kind, and never loses her cool. She's the embodiment of motherhood, if you will. Fujimoto is madly in love with her and gets butterflies in his stomach just at the thought of seeing her. It leads to disaster, of course, exacerbated by the fact that the door doesn't work properly. When Grandma Mare appears for the first time, Sosuke's father... I watched Ponyo three times or so, and the only character whose name I can't seem to remember is Sosuke's father. The name of Sosuke's mother is Lisa, I know, but when it comes to his father, the voice actor's name keeps popping into my head, Kazushige Nagashima. That's because the character really fits the public image of this voice actor, like often being absent from home and unreliable. So I'll refer to Sosuke's father as Kazushige, but please don't mind. So, Grandma Mare appears for the first time when she glides past Kazushige's ship underwater. She's ginormous! Kazushige says, Look! Pointing at the glowing wave approaching them. It's split into three panels. I'll start at the top. A glowing wave appears in the sea, and if you look closely, there's something like a red gem right beneath it. Its brightness is its characteristic. This red gem is what's making the wave glow. It glides past right beneath the ship. And right then, you can see that the red gem is... So here's her face, here's her neck, and here's her chest. She's wearing a low-cut dress, and this part of her body, I think the proper term is décolletage, is revealed. And there's a necklace hanging loosely on her chest. That's where this red gem is. So the point is, the reason why the red gem is causing this wave is... Grandma Maure always swims in a sort of backstroke near the surface of the water. But, because her boobs are so big, they create waves! Alert! Here come the huge boobs! I guess Miyazaki was having a field day! This scene always struck me as strange, so I went back and paused it to take a closer look. I could see the necklace right beneath the wave, and what else is there? Her boobs! She's swimming backstroke right beneath the water and her huge boobs stick out in the sea, creating a wave. That's an amazing way to hint at the size of her breasts. But personally, I find her scary. Let me explain. Take a look at this scene. It's about a minute after the previous one. Here's Fujimoto. You can see his little figure at the ship's bow and his wife, Grandma Mare, pokes out her head. But once she starts talking to Fujimoto, holding his hand and all, she glows and her size shrinks to match his. And this happens while he's telling her what's happened. It looks like she wears the pants in this relationship. So the husband is like, look, my wife, I have a problem. And she just listens to him going, I don't think that's such a bad thing. 
While she's just listening to him, she remains huge. But as soon as Fujimoto tells her that Ponyo wants to become human, she tries to persuade him. As she tells him, that's a very good idea, my love, let's make her human, she suddenly shrinks to Fujimoto's size and squeezes his hand. Up till then, she remained huge, sort of keeping Fujimoto at arm's length. But when she wants to persuade him, she shrinks to human size and goes all touchy-feely holding his hand. You realize she's using her sex appeal to coax her husband into agreeing with her. That's a bold move and she's very shrewd indeed. So, let's look at the scene where this huge Grandma Mare shrinks to human size. It's pretty incredible. I've split it into four panels. First, she turns around. She sends a sideway glance at Fujimoto who's on her left. Only the left side of her face is visible to Fujimoto. So, that side doesn't change. Meanwhile, the right side of her face begins to shrink. I really encourage those of you who've recorded the movie to go back and check it out for yourselves. You'll see the right side of her face beginning to shrink, the side Fujimoto can't see. Then she turns to face him. And now, look at this third panel. Now, both sides of her face are the same size, but she's still a giant from the neck down, while only her face is human size, so her face and neck just don't seem to match. And then, when she suddenly draws very close to Fujimoto, her body finally becomes well proportioned, though her neck is still a tad long. In this scene, Grandma Mare's monstrosity, I guess you can call it, is depicted with such careful detail. When I was watching, I thought for a second, wait, did they do a sloppy job? But there's just no way they would be sloppy when such an important character makes her first appearance, especially in slow motion like that. The right side of her face begins to shrink, followed by her whole face. It's disproportionate to her still long neck. But then the rest of her body shrinks and becomes well proportioned as she draws closer to Fujimoto. She's trying to hide this monster-like part of herself from her husband, but the audience can see it. As I said, the creators went out of their way to depict this woman's monstrosity. So, as you all can see, she can shrink and grow at will, but that alone isn't enough to explain some other mysterious scenes in the movie. One of them is when Grandma Mare and Sosuke's mother, Lisa, have a private conversation. It's toward the very end of the movie. Grandma Mare and Lisa are standing and talking. The grannies in the retirement home are observing them from afar, wondering aloud, what are they discussing for so long? We can't tell. Grandma Mare's size makes her look a little scary. I guess there's no reason why she should shrink to match Lisa's size. She's kind of intimidating, but that's what I like about her. The grannies call out to Lisa and... Then Lisa waves and responds, coming, as you can see here. Grandma Mare gives a quick side glance this way, too. As Lisa starts to walk toward us, she walks around the flower beds. I mean, why are these flower beds there in the first place? I checked the storyboard, and there they were, with a note that said, Lisa walks around the flower beds. There must be a reason as to why they went to the trouble of making her do that. So, why did Miyazaki put the flower beds there? And it's not just this scene. This is where Sosuke and Ponyo finally see Grandma Mare's face to face. But look, there are flower beds here as well. Grandma Mare appears on the right and approaches them but stops short of the flower beds before starting the conversation. 
You see, Grandma Mare never ever shows her feet or legs to the audience. It's because... Well, to start with, why can she shrink and grow at will in the sea? For that matter, why does she even glow? Miyazaki gives a very clear answer in this book. The Wind Returns, second volume. It's a collection of his interviews. In it, Miyazaki reveals that Grandmama is actually a deep sea angler fish. So she's a monster. A huge deep sea angler fish, about one kilometer long. That's the true nature of Grandmama. And Ponyo is the result of crossbreeding between this huge angler fish and a male human. So, two different species mated and produced an offspring. You can see that in some Japanese folktales, like the crane wife and crane's return of a favor, where a human has a child with a non human. Miyazaki explains that this crossbreeding is essential to the story of Ponyo. He actually looks delighted explaining it, saying they crossbred. She's a deep sea anglerfish, you know, about one kilometer long. So, what is this anglerfish like? I'm sure many of you already know. But here, this is the true nature of Grandma Mare. It's a deep sea fish. It has really sharp teeth and this antenna protruding from its head emits something called luminescent liquid around its tip. That's why it goes deep in the ocean. The tip right here is actually what we see of Grand Mamare. This part takes the form of a woman, and it's connected to the body of this humongous, one kilometer long, grotesque, deep sea creature. As I said, Grand Mamare is connected to the body of a deep sea angler fish. This angler fish has an antenna that glows in the deep sea, and that's how it lures prey. In the same way, Grandmama transforms the tip of its antenna into the body of a very beautiful woman in order to lure male humans and crossbreed. Miyazaki explains in the book I mentioned earlier, as well as in other interviews, that Grandmama has many other husbands besides Fujimoto. This is to say that she is voracious and lecherous. She likes to mate with as many partners as possible. He goes on to say that Ponyo and Grand Mamara are like that. Then, where are the other men besides Fujimoto? Are they living in the sea in some corner of the world like him, always longing for a visit by Grand Mamare? The answer is probably not. Why? Well, that's to do with the fact that Grand Mamare is actually an angler fish and how a female and male angler fish mate is rather peculiar. I got this image from National Geographic. It says the male integrates itself into the female after it bites. So, the male anglerfish embeds itself into the female's body as a parasite and becomes nothing more than a bump in her body. Its tissues adhere to the female flesh in the process and will never be detached. So, the male anglerfish becomes a parasite in the female and will stay this way for the rest of its life. The female anglerfish emits chemicals into the water to lure a male, who is just a fraction of the female in size. And the male depends on these chemicals to find the female. Once it does, the male bites into any part of the female body and in that instant, its tissues and circulatory system begin to fuse with the female's flesh. From then on, the male receives nutrients from the female's blood and its eyes and fins and most of its organs start to degenerate and disappear. Eventually, it will only exist as an organ to produce sperm whenever the female is ready to spawn. 
And this is what makes anglerfish so unique. If Miyazaki took the trouble to make Grand Mamare an anglerfish, it only makes sense to assume that all the other husbands have already been absorbed into her. Then, why hasn't Fujimoto been absorbed yet? According to brochures and books about Ponyo, Fujimoto is a surviving crew member of the submarine Nautilus from the novel 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. In the scene where Fujimoto is extracting what he calls the sea elixir, we see the year 1871 labeled on the oldest urn. So, why just put a specific year on this urn? This specific date on the urn has a connection to what I just said about his setting. The reason for this is because Jules Verne's novel, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, was published in 1870. And it is accounted in the book, which reads like a non-fiction, that the Nautilus sank in the ocean around that time. In that same year, 1870, Grandma Mara supposedly saved Fujimoto, and ever since then, he has been purifying seawater to store up the potion of life. We can assume that he filled up the first urn in 1971. So, Fujimoto used to be a crew member of the submarine Nautilus. Miyazaki has called it a hidden subplot, but he's mentioned this out in the open on so many occasions, so we can trust it to be the case. And that's the reason why Grand Mamare hasn't absorbed Fujimoto yet, because he's been useful to her. Oh, I'm sorry, it was 1871. My bad. So, for Fujimoto, Grandma Mara is his beloved wife, but at the same time, a terrifying figure because she will probably absorb him once he's no longer useful to her. Supposedly, there are many other husbands, but since we only see Fujimoto making the potion of life, the other men have either died or already been integrated into Grandma Mara's body, which I think is most plausible since Grandma Mara is actually an anglerfish. So, as Fujimoto gets older and is no longer able to work on what he's been doing, he'll probably be absorbed by Grandma Mare. His tissues will adhere to her flesh and finally be integrated into her body. But it's a mystery how Fujimoto will react when that actually happens. Maybe he will be terrified and resistant. But having seen him in the film, I think it may even make him happy. So, going back to what I was saying earlier, all of this leads me to believe that behind those flower beds, there's probably a huge antenna, and that antenna is connected to... Let me mark it. There's the body of a deep sea anglerfish, like this. And right here. We can't see it, but there's an antenna here. And that's the reason why Lisa took the trouble to walk around the flower beds, so not to step on this antenna. But the audience who are pleasantly watching the movie can't see it because of the flower beds. And that's precisely the creator's purpose, to hide the antenna from the audience. 